Climate change is presenting new and devastating challenges for farmers as well the patterns that they have depended on for decades start to change, leaving them at the mercy of the vagaries of weather. I am here in Nakuru County in Kenya to show you how modern and innovative agriculture is being put into practice to enable farmers ensure a good harvest, a great return and mainstreaming into a global food value chain. For decades, the rolling hills of Narok in Nakuru County in Kenya's Rift Valley region has been synonymous with fairly large-scale production of crops like wheat and barley. The increasingly poor returns have meant that many farmers have had to look beyond the traditional cereals of wheat and maize. But now a new color is starting to dot the landscape as a new crop comes into vogue. Enter canola or rapeseed, popular for production of edible oils and replete with tiny oil seeds after blooming bright yellow flowers. For many here, this is the new gold, and for them, the gold rush may just be beginning. I started planting this crop in 2019. It is a new crop with better returns compared to the crops I planted before. I used to plant maize, wheat and barley, but after doing this for a long time, yields started to drop. I then started looking for alternatives that would not only give good returns but also improve my soil. My yield from maize used to be about 25 bags per acre, compared to today where I am at 30-35 bags per acre after planting canola. So the canola actually improves the soil and its market is readily available. In between 50 to 150 days, it gives about 1.5 tons per acre. At 50 cents per kilo, even after deducting cost of inputs, there's still a good return. It is also fairly simple to plant. It does not require a lot of chemicals or effort and also is effective at controlling weeds. For years now, long rains that fell in April presenting a good boost to any seeds in the ground to sprout and the fairly long dry season in the other half of the year have been regular, predictable and reliable. But today the rains are sporadic, often very heavy and with devastating consequences for crops. Sometimes the rains fail completely. This has made traditional farming here unsustainable. Consider this. A farmer can earn between $25 to $35 for a 90 kilogram bag of wheat, with productivity averaging about 25 to 30 bags per acre for the average farmer over a season of about five months. This is in stark contrast to the earnings from canola. The crop's yield ranges from about 750 to 1500 kilograms per acre, with the canola plant maturing within three months. Amina Mohamed Komen is one other such farmer. Her story is similar to that of Anthony in that she started off rotating her wheat crop with canola in order to achieve better returns. In 2018, I did 10 acres. I got $5,500 for the 10 acres. In 2019, I increased, I did 30 acres and that is 15,500 for the for the 500 dollars for the 30 acres but in 2020 I did wheat I did not do canola that year I skipped of which my wheat had a very high yield I got 22 bags per acre in 2021 this is the year we are doing it I did 10 acres again because of the rains. Canola has a marginable profit because it's low in production uh, input. Again, you, you, you have easy market, the, the factory is near our place. Thirdly, after I did it once and then I planted wheat, the second crop, I noticed the canola has made my shamba fertile. Because I noticed canola at an early stage, they build a canopy. 
that canopy, it really controls weed. So due to that, you don't have to, for the second crop, you'll not use a lot of weed control chemicals. Growing canola, though, is not easy and has required major investment in science and technology, which would ordinarily be out of the reach of the farmer. In this case, however, their science and technology partner is Adventure Limited. This is an organization which works with non-irrigated farms with a focus on enabling sustainable conservation agriculture practices to become established. We provide uh, a ready market and we provide uh, the farmers with, um, with agronomy support. We have uh, field officers who are out in the field supporting the farmers. We do the soil testing for them and as a result, the farmer is able to feed his crop based on uh, tested knowledge and tested uh, advice. Seed and technology company Adventure buys the canola seed from farmers at about 55 shillings per kilogram. And one of the biggest challenges we faced was uh, the declining productivity in our farms. And many a times we thought this was attributable to the rains. We discovered that uh, those countries that were doing very well, they were in uh, what you call conservation agriculture. And uh, those countries applied this farming practice, the principle of minimum disturbance of the soil. If you keep on plowing your soil with a disc plow, you also keep on destroying all the organic matter in the soil. The other bit, you also lose the capacity of the soil to store water. We were vulnerable also to the weather, to lack of rain. We have been able to build a very good moisture bank in the soil that is, allows us to plant early. We are able to harvest and have another second crop by the end of the year. All this is made possible by a partnership with Global Spreads company Upfields, which buys the pressed canola oil for use in various products. This enables it to ensure sustainability and minimization of impact on the environment. We used to import um, canola oil from um, Netherlands, a um, huge amount, uh, but I think in 2007, Unilever partnered with, with the Adventure and we're importing roughly um, a small quantity, but now we have got so many farmers who have come on board. We started with 500 farmers. We are now sitting with 7,500 farmers. And right now, the output that we're getting from that side, it's catering about 80% of our requirement. So we're still importing 20%. And it's our goal that by next year, we will stop importing and we get 100% from the farmers. The CEO is quick to add that in this new dispensation, there are plenty of opportunities for young African farmers to get in on the action and carve a niche for themselves, while also earning themselves a livelihood. Basically, moving people from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet, because that has the biggest impact on the environment, is reducing the environmental footprint by around 70%. So when you look at, for example, plant butter and mar margarine versus dairy butter, the production of plant butter and margarine requires half the amount of water and less than two-thirds of the amount of land that is required. Uh, so it's much more sustainable going forward. And if you know that by 2015, there's expected to be 10 billion people living on this planet, the planet simply does not have the resources in terms of land and water to provide these 10 billion people uh, with, with meat and dairy. Therefore, the future of food is plant-based.